walk the walk. Now, later on in his article, I was even more bothered because he says that the idea of of getting of bowing and and lowering oneself to God is like such a something from the old days. Like we don't do this anymore. And I'm like, um, excuse me, Elena and Yom Kippur. Tach noon twice a day. Where we don't lie down on the floor. Well, we 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 bow our head down, right? We put our yeah, we put our head, and then if you got your smartphone, you can just scroll through the New York Times. Yeah, well, that's because he's got like the the porn going. I don't I don't look at porn during talking and I look at the New York Times. Okay, so we 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 bow our head twice a day as Jews, and when you go to shul, you bow your head twice a day in the morning. Unless the Rebbe was uh, freed from a Russian jail on that day. <laughs> Chabad doesn't have so many takanites. So you go like that. And so he's saying like this is something that happened in the old days. And I'm like, excuse me, Judaism is still doing this alive today. More Jews are, are, are doing this every day, every single day, more and more Jews are doing that. So, so I was just fully disgusted. And I, it comes to a point where I just want to, what do we have to do to separate ourselves from all these things. Like, like, do whatever you want to do, but just don't call yourself conservative Jewish rabbi. Just say that, like, a Jew leader of some heretical movement or something like that. You know what I mean? By the way, Bubba Messiah is going to be around. What else do you give on Denver uh, winning the Super Bowl? Uh, what, what? What odds would you give on Denver winning the Super Bowl? Uh, Denver winning the Super Bowl? Yeah. They're going to be going with the fourth seed, aren't they? Um, I'd say probably fifty to one. That's going to be tough because I, I really think right now the Super. I think we're looking at the, we're looking at a basketball game. I think we're looking at a preview to the Super Bowl right now. Forty nine. Forty nine is Pittsburgh, yeah. right? And if it's not Pittsburgh, my second guess would be New, New England, England, right? So who's left? It's like, um, uh, um. We got Houston, who's unreliable. I cannot win with Houston on. on what Monday. odds could you give on Denver? I'd say fifty to one. I don't even know if they're going to win their division because Oakland—they're tied with Oakland right now. No, they're a game up on Oakland, and they have the tiebreaker. Oh, really? Yeah. And the San Diego's chasing them, and San Diego never loses in uh, in September. December. December. Thank you. Um, fifty to one. Yeah. To win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, that's about right. To win the Super that, Bowl? That would be incredible. If Denver won the Super Bowl, I'd be amazed. That would be the most amazing football story in my lifetime. Really? Yeah. You know, they they won they the Super Bowl. They were one and four. Yeah, like I know. Only two teams, I think, have ever gone to the playoffs starting one and four. Hold on. When they won the Super Bowl with uh, with Elway, the first time that they won it in, in, in this 1997 season, mm -hmm. Green Bay was the big team that year, mm -hmm. and 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 Denver won the Super Bowl with a big upset over Green Bay, and and like no, if you had thought Denver was going to win the Super Bowl during the middle of the season, you're out of your mind, yeah. you know. So that was, it, it, who knows, it could happen, but I, I would give, uh, I'd give a fifty to one shot. Okay, so that's what's going on over there. Now let's look at the chat room real quick before we go to the Parsha. Uh, Happy Hanukkah, guys. Thanks, uh, Faith. Um. Okay, I want to talk about my maniac. There's nothing in the chat, chat room. You can scan it or you like. But uh, there's this guy who goes around Shaw's oh, yeah, in the Fairfax La Brea area. His name's Gary Wexler, W-E-K-S-L-E-R. And uh, here, let me, let me pull it up. Let me... Let me. Is this going to be Lush and Horror? No, it's, there have been multiple articles in the Los Angeles Times about the guy. He's got uh, multiple felony convictions for blowing things up, and he's coming around shawls. So, okay. I mean, how would you like to um, come around shawls? You know, and there's this guy who's obsessed with making explosives. You know, how come I didn't see this? Coming around. Uh, so, remember the Santa Monica Chabad suffered this big deliberate explosion? That was like a year ago. April 7th, about eight months ago, by uh -huh. an old man who used to haunt a lot of these shores looking for handouts, and then right. he set off a bomb. Right, right, right. So these guys, like this is so typical, come around looking for handouts and then setting off a bomb. So you've got this guy, Gary Stephen Wexler, he's now about 50 years old. He once blew off his hand. Oh my God. He once uh, blew up much of a Korean town apartment building. Um, he has a fixation with pyrotechnics and weapons. 
and uh, he's got severe personality problems and a persecution complex fueled by memory memories of recurrent run-ins with the law and with a broken home, like multiple articles in the Los Angeles Times about him. Juvenile delinquent, is now 50 years old, and uh, he loves fireworks. So he has a big fireworks cache, and uh, this has exploded on, on multiple occasions, once injuring 10 police officers. 10 police officers. <laughs> so he's had multiple explosions, like knocking down... Uh, apartment buildings and blowing parts of himself off. And how would you like, you know, someone like that coming around your shore? Why is he not in jail? Well, I guess he served his time and he, he didn't, he never like deliberately tried to blow anyone <coughs> up. It was always just, and he, he's never seriously hurt anyone but himself, blowing off his hand. But he's had like firearms possession and uh, conviction. I think the guy seriously needs to be in a mental institution, don't you? Yeah. But, like, how would you like someone like that coming around your shore? I don't want him, I don't know. I don't really want him around, to be honest. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, particularly after what happened at at the Santa Monica Habad. Right. This week's Torah portion is McCates, which is Genesis 41 to 44. Take it. Rabbi Beryl Wine writes, The psalmist asks the question, From where shall my salvation arrive? So we don't know where our salvation will come from. We don't know if it will arrive. We can maximize our own chances by maintaining a strong network of ties to other people, developing our own emotional resilience, developing our skills, and developing mastery of as much of our lives as possible. But all we can do is maximize our chances and uh, have faith in God. But... You know, we don't know where salvation is going to come from. Can I can I uh, pipe, pipe in on that? Of course. What do you mean we don't know where salvation will arrive? We may not know when it'll arrive, but we certainly do know from where it comes from. Our salvation comes from God. Or well, there may be no salvation. Like we may die miserable, alone, horribly. So we may have no salvation in this life. Our lives may suck from here. Now we may walk out the door and get shot. So as far as our own salvation... What do you mean by salvation? What does that mean? We'll be saved. Like like, sometimes a check, a thousand dollars is a salvation for me. Wait, stop, stop, stop. I feel like we're discussing Christianity. Christianity Mm -hmm. has this concept of you're going to be saved Save from eternal damnation. What are we saved from here? Well, there are a lot of explain things we can be saved from being explain homeless. Explain to me what you mean by salvation. Save me from being homeless. Save me from bouncing checks. Save me from losing my health insurance. Like, save me from being alone. Save me from, uh, like, serious build-up of, like, the bodily fluids till they, like, get into my brain and drive me crazy. Like, there are a lot of different forms of salvation. I don't know if I I don't know if I would call that salvation. You know what I would call that? To get the brachas, to get the blessings. Judaism believes in getting brachas to to solve certain problems. You carry this, show. I'm just going to get a drink. To solve certain problems, to give us brachas so we can do the mitzvahs, to, to so we can have good health, so we're able to learn Torah, so that we can have a wife, so that we aren't alone. Day after day after day, every Shabbos. La 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 la. What are some big Hanukkah songs? Motto. Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made it out of clay, and when it's hot and ready, that's when I announce I'm gay. Okay, so we did that. All right, so so the brachas, the brachas is what Judaism is about. Judaism is not about, save me, I need to be saved. If you don't believe in this or you don't believe in that, you're not going to be saved. Judaism is, an, in, is not a salvation religion. It's not a saved... Oh, look at this. We talk, start talking about the partial, we lose two people immediately. Well, so one of them's a liquid rub, and the other one's Henry. Henry seems to, to butt out early, but everybody else is still in. No, liquid rub is... Don't worry I, about it. Okay. Saved is a Christian concept. That's a Christian religion. They worry about salvation and being saved. Jews like brachas, blessings, so that they have the strength 
10, they can have what they need in terms of 